There we go. See, it wasn't so bad. See how that just fits right in there? Welcome back to the garage, guys. Okay, so um, last big video is you saw me start mounting up and making the mounts for the box. And I mentioned in that video that I would like to move these uh, points, these mounting points, outward to six inches to match the mounting points on the lower control arms. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. So, so I went to my metal supplier, I picked up myself some half inch by one, and I got some five eighths by one. Um, it's kind of big, thick, heavy stuff. And the reason I got this is I'm going to make the Heim spreader out of this material. Basically what a Heim spreader does, I drill a couple holes if for where it mounts to the box and then I can move the points out because it's so close there and there's not a whole lot of room. As I move them out, I also gonna move them up and away from the box and that will do a couple of things. It'll give me more space for the tie rods, but it will also move the tie rods out, which means this will have to sink into the bulkhead a little more. So I needed to make this before I finally mounted the steering box. So let's get to that. Now, I don't know why I didn't say this on camera, but another thing the Heim spreader does is help match the tie rod length with the A-arm length. And this should help reduce bumps. Anyway, the first thing I did was to measure the steering rack tie rod mounts. Yes, I drew everything out I want to build. By now you know it's a thing I do. I'm actually looking to upgrade my computer to be able to run some sort of CAD program. If anyone has any recommendations for a good CAD system, feel free to leave it in the comments. Besides, I'd love to find a job designing and building things, so maybe it'll be good for my future as well. I did my first cut on my first bar, but one of them, one of the points was off just a bit, so I'm just going to do it again. Why not? So I got some uh, half by one inch, and then while I was at the Home Depot, I got some quarter by half, and then I also have uh, one inch by five eighths. So the goal. So if I take my half inch heim, and I take the the width. When it's bolted in, it's 5 eighths. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the half by one, and then I'm going to put the half by 5 eighths in the middle, and then I'm going to do the double shear with the quarter by one flat bar, and that will give me a nice little spot to mount these two. I will do some trimming around it, so there will be a little bit of misalignment I can do, but not a whole lot, and that'll It'll space off the himes off the steering rack, uh, you know, half an inch, half an inch to three quarters of an inch. That'll give me some room between the heim and the tie rod and the rack itself. I could use thicker material for my tie rods as well as put it in double shear and uh, just also get the length of my tie rods to match to the length of my A-arms. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so what I did is I went to Home Depot Got myself half inch uh, Allen bolts. Those little puppies are expensive. I got myself a half inch tap and the drill uh, or the drill bit that for the half inch tap so I could tap this. And so the goal is to basically tap this so as I run it through, it'll, I don't have to put a nut behind it. A nut behind it could hit the, the steering rack and I wouldn't want that. So what I'm gonna do is that as I run it down to where it needs to be, I'll just cut off the excess and that'll be fine. What else did I get? That's it, really. Um, got the bolts, got the tap, got the bar. Let's do this. With that plan in place, I remarked the holes and started to recreate the Heim spreader. After cutting it out, I cleaned it up and made sure the marks were still on point. Then I drilled them out. Since I'm doing this for all three bars, I repeated the process on all the bars. All right, 
right, so I got all the holes. Cut out the fur top ones or the middle ones to half. That'll be the ones that fit in the in the rack itself. I only did a small hole into the uh, the outer where the uh, arm joints are going to go. As you can see, those will fit just perfect inside there. And I'm going to use this setup basically to uh, to drill out the middle holes, and then I'm going to grind everything smooth so that it looks like the same piece. And I'm going to tap those with a half inch tap so that everything just goes whoop, right on in there. But yeah, yeah, just see how that all comes together. Since I had everything together, I decided to go ahead and cut the contours and the ends of the Heim spreader with a bandsaw. And then cleaned it up with the grinder first, then the sander. Then I drilled out the outer holes for the half inch tap. Once complete, I tapped the holes by hand. This was actually easier than I expected. After that, I went ahead and assembled the bars and tried to put the two middle bolts in. Unfortunately, having drilled each bar separately, the holes were close, but they did need a little persuasion. Not exactly the way you want to make them fit. Reminds me of an old uh, four-wheeling phrase. Don't worry, it'll fit. All that work to build this. So these two bolts bolt into the stock bolting place and then your himes clean it up just a skosh Ugh, fit right in like so and because I cut the threads into this I don't need a nut on one side all I need to do is I'm gonna open up these holes quite a bit uh, not quite a bit but maybe about 30 thousandths <laughs> Um, anyway, so not a hundred percent happy with it. Um, I'm going to chase the holes out. Um, there is some binding in there. I, I need an end mill. Really. I really need one of them. Uh, I think it's an end mill, a big machine. It looks like a drill press, but super precision. So I could just, you know, drill the holes perfectly, but uh anyway it's all by hand uh kind of sucks but wanted that to come out a little better to be honest with you um i guess it's not bad but it's not great either oh <sighs> in reality i'll probably just remake it it didn't take much to build this um i just chopped a couple things off drilled holes and that's it i mean there's really not much to it you know while i wasn't happy with it i decided to keep on going i mean why not it may just work and after welding them together and grinding them smooth, and of course chasing out the holes, this happened. All right, so small issue. So when I put all this together, I basically dropped these bolts down through the middle holes, and they took some pounding um, to get in place. The problem is, is when I put them in the outside holes, they, it's like they almost line up. I mean, almost line up. Um, I should have put them in the outside holes, not the inside holes but um, at least it would have uh, made the outside holes proper, which is the important part. Cause I could always, I always, I, I chase the inside holes out. I can't chase the outside holes out because that's where the threads are. And so I can't do that without, um, without it uh, chasing the threads out. Um, yikes. But anyway, here, I'll show you how it turned out. It actually didn't turn out half bad. I don't like the way that this is tapered. Um, I don't like that at all, frankly. I think it could have been cleaner. Could have done a little better job filling that. I mean, it's just barely. Uh, this side is fine. Um, as you can see, here's the little piece that came with the 
thing. I mean, it'll just basically bolt on. Let's bolt it on, actually. Let's do that. Oof. That's too tight. Oof. Yeah, it's not going to work. Dang it. I guess I don't have very good tolerances. <laughs> I'm going to try it again. See what happens. Less, luckily, it didn't take very long the first time, so uh, with luck, it'll uh, happen second time. So yeah, I rebuilt it. After cleaning up the bar, cutting it out, I changed up my strategy. This time, I put all the pieces together so I could drill them all at once at the same time. My big issue with the last one was how to make everything work uh, with the drill holes being drilled in. They were ever so slightly off. That skewed the bolts just a skosh and they wouldn't fit into the rack. So what I did is I just lined everything up on top of each other as best I could, tack welded them all together so that they're all one big chunk. Um, I'm gonna use a larger pilot hole uh, for this simply because I don't want uh, small weak uh, drill bits to wander or walk as I drill. If they don't walk, then they won't, you know, spread out or what have you as I push through. I'm going to go a little slower this time as well, see if that works. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Step one, mark the holes. Step two, drill them. Step three, test it. All right, that was fun. The only thing better than doing a job once is doing it a second time. So this is what I got. I uh, drilled the holes. I only drilled the pilot hole through the outer ones, half inch through the top quarter, and whatever it is for the uh, tap for the bottom. But I figure before I cut everything apart and do any more work to this thing. Might as well just uh, see if it fits, huh? Well, first things first, let's see if these uh, bolts will go through. Any luck? They do. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, I'm just going to say that out loud. Thank goodness, because holy freak, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh, both of them go through. All right. Good vibes, man. Good vibes. Um, All right, we have the spacing right. <laughs> we have the spacing right. Okay, sweet, sweet. Now, is it gonna fit on the box? Uh, I'm a little nervous. <gasps> oh my gosh, it worked. Okay, why I didn't do this before, the world may never know. All right, so check it. Bam. Skirt, skirt, as my kids would say there. That's, that's awesome. Okay. Okay. It worked. Let's keep going. Next, I needed to trim down the centerpiece to make room for the hinds. Then I assembled the spreader to check everything. Once I confirmed everything fit, I mounted it back to the steering box and tack welded everything in place prior to welding it. Then I removed it from the rack and with the bolt still in place, welded it up. All right, guys, I uh, got the take two Heim spreader done. Uh, that's what she looks like. As you can see, I did make sure that I went ahead and I kept the bolts in it while I welded it together. 
I actually even threaded in these bolts all the way to the end uh, so that they can, uh, so they were going to hold their position. I didn't want any chances of anything being out of line like the last one because I'm out of material. I got it all cleaned up. I welded it in and then sanded it down. It's still piping hot. There's the other side. Not too bad, not too bad if you ask me, but let it cool, then I'll round it off. You guys will see the finished product in future videos. But uh, that's how I built my Heim spreader. Again, the whole point was to make sure that my Heims can be out to six inches on center. Whatever A-arm kit you have, you can measure your own uh, pivot points and, uh, and basically build your own spreader. All I did is I took some, uh, some one inch bar and I just cut them all up, drilled them through, everything worked out well. The first time I made way too much work for myself. The second time was much faster. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is an easy way of doing it. I recommend it. And again, like what it will do, it will allow me to space my, uh, my tie rods out. Therefore, the length will be much, much closer to the A-arm length. And that will make everything arc in the same radius. And so therefore, it'll help eliminate bump steer. I'm not saying that this is going to eliminate it completely, but it will technically theoretically i should say uh minimize it so doing all these things to minimize my bump steer hopefully will actually make it minimized but we'll see anyway uh that's all i got for today please like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one i'm damien and this is the binder builder